Hello everyone. Welcome to Reactify Labs. Today we will talk about geospatial indexes. Geospatial indexes. Okay. Hmm. What is geospatial index? Why do we need geospatial index? Um, let's understand with uh, an example. Let's say you have a map of the world. Okay. And you want to find some place. Uh, let's consider your Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatever you use. Okay. And uh, you decide to see, let's say, um, right now Paris Olympics are going on. So Paris Olympics venue. Okay. Let's see, you search this. So the world is a really, really big place, right? Um, we know the radius of the earth is, I don't know, some 640,000 kilometers, I believe, something like this. So it's really big, right? So if you have to find Paris Olympics venue in that big earth, how will you find it? Um, let's for comparison, let me tell you, if you have a database and it has a million records, okay? If you have a database, uh, let's a very simple database. Okay, it's just has let's say your name, um, address, and phone number. Okay, just very simple database. And let's say it has one million, actually one billion records. Okay, and if you have to search it, search for some entry. For example, let's say um, let's take the example of both a uh, very small query as well as very big query. For example, let's say you search for somebody named John okay this is one simple query or let's say you decide to search for all phone numbers which have uh, let's say number 895 anywhere in the phone number okay this consecutive 895 should be there okay so this is a very simple query. This is a very complex query, right? It has to do all the pattern matching. Uh, a more complex query example would be, let's say, all phone numbers having 895 and smaller than, let's say, 9000000 something or 6000 something, okay? Like, it's possible, right? Like these kinds of query can exist. And even these kinds of queries take a few seconds to run. Okay. So these take, uh, take a few seconds, actually more than a few seconds. Okay. Uh, so even this, even in this simple database query takes a few seconds, which, but this, this kind of map and the end number of entries in the map is much, much more than much, much more than 1 billion, right? But still, when you put this Paris Olympics venue in your Google map, Google map quickly displays you that like, yes, see, this is where the Paris Olympics venue is like within seconds, within seconds as in less than a second, right? How does this happen? Geospatial indexes are what are used here. And we will talk about it how, but this is the real life example, real life use case of geospatial indexes. So basically what it is doing is it is indexing something and if you index something it becomes very quick to find it. Uh, I have talked about this in other videos as well. Let's say uh, in very simple terms if you have to understand index is basically mapping. Mapping of something to something like whatever you have to find you are mapping that. It's the very simple it's not the correct explanation but it's a very simple explanation. This is how you can understand it right. Uh, we did that during the elastic search as well. Um, we did the inverted index, remember, uh, we did the inverted indexing during elastic search, during search indexes. So we did a lot of things. Uh, we have talked about index a lot. So if you have not watched those videos, please go and watch that. They are uh, really helpful. Okay. So now that we know why geospatial indexes are, um, <clears throat> required and what role they play, let's see the technicalities behind it. Okay. So let's discuss the structure that we are going to follow today. First, we will start with the introduction. Okay. 
first we will start with the introduction of uh, geospatial indexes next we will see the types of geospatial indexes next we will talk about the applications of geospatial indexes then the challenges that come with geospatial indexes then we will talk about some real world examples and then we will see the advantages associated with them and limitations okay so this is what we are going to discuss today so let's start with introduction so the introduction says geospatial indexes are basically sophisticated data structures because again if the word is sophisticated it means they are making our life very easy and if they are making our life very easy it means they are very complex to implement okay so geospatial indexes are sophisticated data structures which are designed for efficient management of spatial data designed for efficient management of what spatial data okay so spatial data is in the data is in space okay they play a critical role in storing retrieving and analyzing information okay intricately linked to which are linked to geographical locations geographical location so these are the different like these are also data structures but different kinds of data structures they deal primarily in geographical locations so in location based data applications like mapping services geotagging and spatial analytics geospatial indexes are very very important okay they provide the necessary framework for optimizing operations involving geographic coordinates okay so what are the types of uh, geospatial indexes uh, one is quad tree one is r tree so i am not going to go into the details of quad tree and r tree so these are some of the examples quad tree is particularly an interesting one i have made a separate video about this please uh, go and watch it it's already in the playlist um, you'll like it the you'll see how um, like interestingly quad tree solves our problem okay next let's see the applications of geospatial indexes so the applications are mapping services mapping services geospatial indexes serve as the backbone of mapping services optimizing the retrieval of location based information the intricacies of spatial relationships are efficiently navigated ensuring a seamless mapping experience and location based services location based services in the domain of location based services geospatial indexes are very 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 essential they tailor the information based on the user's specific geographic locations enhancing the precision and relevance of the services offered okay now uh, let's see uh, what are the challenges and considerations that come with geospatial indexes okay so we will see the challenges first comes the scalability challenges scalability challenges so scaling geospatial indexes poses a challenge especially in managing large data sets and handling frequent updates ensuring optimal performance while accommodating growth is a critical decision because as i told you the world is a very big place right not like like actually the world is a very big place but we are not even talking about world we are only talking about earth okay so the data set you know is very huge but let's take an example of something like uh, let's say the himalayas okay or some of the desert uh, sahara desert this desert is right now very empty okay sahara or antarctica these are very empty let's say tomorrow something changes tomorrow let's say um, rest of the earth is full 
people start migrating to this place or people start migrating here somebody goes and opens a mcdonald's here okay in the antarctica somebody opens a um, burger king here in the, in the sahara right so this is one example if these come a lot of things will come right like let's say petrol pump um, means gas station airport um, something else and like a lot of things can come right so this is just one example like right now like now that it's saturated we are taking this example but imagine when it was just starting when a lot of um, places were empty and then the data set started growing a lot of people moved from one place to another a lot of shops came up a lot of uh, new data came up means the data set of this uh, geospatial data set was growing it means they had to accommodate continuous growth so this is where scalability challenges came right and they keep coming still they need to um, handle a lot of things like let's say tomorrow one store like some mcdonald's closed and instead of that let's say a kfc opened you have to accommodate all these things right and that's where the scalability challenge comes up because you have a very large data set and you have to maintain it then you have to meticulously design your software in such a way that everything gets handled okay uh, in the consideration there comes precision versus performance precision versus performance the trade off between precision and performance is very thin choosing the right level of granularity in spatial data is essential as increased precision often comes with performance implications striking the right balance is crucial for effectiveness of geospatial indexes because for example let's say if somebody wants to see where is let's say i am traveling i am going on a road trip i see uh, i get hungry and i see let's say mcdonalds near me okay what i am interested in is a location like only that much information that i reach the mcdonalds i don't need even more granular information like show me what the mcdonalds building looks like right that level of granularity is not needed here so that that level of precision is not needed so we need to know like what level of precision do we need and similarly the same thing like sometimes you see uh, you look like uh, like your map says your location is here but sometimes it's here so that again comes in precision like this one is accurate to let's say 10 meters or this one is accurate to 50 meters right so that level of precision versus performance trade off is something that we need to take care of okay so now that scalability challenges and uh, how precision versus performance um, comparison or uh, consideration is important let's move to the real world examples real world examples first one as i talked about in the beginning google maps google maps leverages geospatial indexes to offer users precise and real time location based information the efficiency of geospatial indexing ensures a seamless mapping experience enables users to navigate and explore their surroundings effortlessly next is uber Uber relies on geospatial indexes to streamline its operations by effectively managing the location data of drivers and swiftly matching them with ride requests. Geospatial indexes play a pivotal role in optimizing the dynamic and location centric nature of Uber's platform. So, how does Uber know like if you are here, your driver is here, it tells you it tells you right like the driver will reach you in some like this minutes, right? So, usually if you see if the path is straight it's easy like okay this is a five minute path but what if there is a big valley running between you and driver needs to go through this there is a bridge and needs to go through this so it's not a straight line anymore right how does uber know this so geospatial indexes help in this also okay similarly you, if you see the food delivery apps doDash they also use the same thing okay now let's talk about the advantages and limitations of using geospatial indexes first we will talk about advantages so first is rapid response times rapid response times geospatial indexes ensure quick response times for spatial queries enhancing the efficiency of location based data retrieval next comes efficient storage efficient storage they facilitate efficient storage of geographic data optimizing the utilization of resources in spatial databases and spatial analytics support 
special analytics support geo spatial indexes support spatial analytics enabling applications to derive meaningful insights from location based information now let's see the limitations first is accuracy challenges yes as we talked about precision versus performance okay geospatial indexes may face difficulties in maintaining accuracy particularly in dynamic spatial data sets with frequent changes yes but sometimes you might have experienced that um, you get your location at some place but you don't find it like sometimes it's even more than 100 meters away right sometimes these problems come okay next is precision versus speed trade off as we talked about precision versus performance or speed trade off is the same thing the trade off between precision and speed is a limitation necessitating necessitating careful consideration based on specific application requirements and balancing considerations balancing considerations achieving an optimal balance between accuracy and speed is essential to maximize the effectiveness of geospatial indexes okay so again it's the same thing like how much accuracy you need and how quickly you need it so this is a limitation which we which we have to live with okay so i believe this video gives you a good insight about geospatial indexes a new kind of indexing um and uh, now you uh, can talk more about um, these food delivery apps or if you are asked about uber system design or google map system design or like food delivery apps like doordash system design these kinds of questions you can talk about geospatial indexes the advantages disadvantages if you go and watch the quad tree you can even go into more details more deep dive into how these are implemented okay so that's all there was in this video uh, i hope you liked it thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe i will see you in the next one